Hello guys, we are now here on our lesson 4 and this is all about architecture. Architecture is considered to be one of the most functional branches of visual arts. So we can readily see architecture in our surroundings because architecture involves designing the form of a building and allowing the building to serve its function and it is considered to be the art to inhabit and when we say art to inhabit it can be occupied in any form so throughout the philippine history both foreign and filipino architects introduce innovations when it comes to creating buildings and large structures even though the design of buildings and homes are still western inspired Architects started to appreciate Filipino social traditions as well as the cultural values. So let's talk about the different forms of contemporary architecture. First, we have the domestic buildings and houses. And under this, we have apartment. When we say apartment, this refers to a building composed of many residences called units. Apartment is usually built in populated urban areas. Nowadays, in order to maximize the use of space and because of the increased buying power of the population, condominiums were developed. But condominiums is quite expensive compared to apartment. These condominiums are larger offshoots of apartments. So most of the units of condominiums can be used as residences but are also used as business and commercial spaces. Next, we have Bahay na Bato. This is built in many areas during the 19th and the 20th centuries. The Bahay na Bato is considered to be a residence of the wealthy. So a typical two-story Bahay na Bato generally has a ground floor that is made of a brick or sometimes a stone. So it has a wooden upper level. The windows of Bahay na Bato have grills, while the windows of the upper level have sliding shutters. So the roof of a typical Bahay na Bato slants on four sides. There are still many Bahay na Bato in the country that exist today. Number three is Barong Barong. Barong are houses of landless poor that are built on any land or area. So these are usually found near the steros, river banks, and bay shores. So also spaces along high walls, railroad track, spaces near abandoned buildings, and garbage dump, or any vacant lot. Some of these bar- some of these barong barong are being built under bridges. So people usually build these houses near the places of a livelihood. So there are also other people who prefer building their houses on wide vacant lots in order to use the lots of raising animals, planting vegetables, or undertaking a small business. Number four is bungalow. And this refers to a one-story house with a wide front porch and a large windows. So it it may also have terrace which may be roofed or not. Fifth is the ethnic houses. We have two kinds of ethnic houses. First is the Bahay Kubo, which is considered as an ethnic house of Christian peasant families living in the lowland areas. So ba- Bahay Kubo is typically owned by families belonging in low income groups. So this Bahay Kubo has pile construction and also a roof sliding in all sides. So this is typically in a traditional ethnic house. However, the Bahay Kubo has sliding windows for ventilation. So the owner of a Bahay Kubo can easily arrange house units since it has or it only has one room. This allows people living within the house to move freely and to interact with other people even those living outside outside the house easily. Second is the houseboat. The houseboat is basically a boat that also serves as dwelling. The Bajaus or Sumalao typically reside in houseboats. Number six is one and a half story house. So the one and a half story house is characterized by an upper level or story covering just a half of the lower level. This may also become the split level house if half of the ground level is higher in such 
in such a way that it is halfway between the ground level and the upper level. So the windows in the upper level provides light and ventilation. Number seven is the split level house. The split level house in the Philippines has two main levels. The lower level house includes the kitchen, living and dining areas, while the upper level has the bedrooms. So these levels are separated by about half or less than a half story. Number eight is chalet. The Philippine chalet refers to a suburban house that has one story or two story house with living quarters on the upper level. It's an elevated one story house. So the term chalet came from the term chalet which refers to a peasant house in Switzerland. Next we have commercial buildings. First example of commercial building is market. It is also known as palenque. This refers to a place or a building for buying and selling goods. So this is referred to as tindahan and changge. Nowadays the palenque has evolved into supermarket, right? It puts the wet market and the grocery together in the same complex. There are designated areas within the supermarket for both perishable and non-perishable commodities. So the mall or galleria is considered a more recent evolved form of a palenque. So the mall refers to a one or multiple story building or square filled with shops. Second is buildings that house banks, business offices, and factories. These buildings, especially those created during the 1950s, have plain wall surfaces, also large windows. So these are this these also have bold rectangular forms and clean lines. Next form of architecture, we have government buildings. First is the Capitol or Capitolio. This refers to the building of the provincial government. Most of the Capitolio in the country use columns and pediments. Another we have the town hall or municipio. This refers to the building of the municipal government, so the offices of the mayor, the municipal council, the municipal court and jail, and other important offices such as the municipal registrar's office are located here. Next, we have the public buildings and structures. First, we have the school or skwelahan. This refers to a place where young people are educated to become productive members of the community. So the most common style of Esquelahan is American influence. This has a featured concrete structure elevated on stilts. These buildings also have windows and awnings that would give the entire building good ventilation. The classrooms in the building are linked together by a veranda located both at the front and rear part of the building. Number two is we have kamalig and this is the Tagalog term for a building used for storing grain. So this is considered to be the most economically significant structure among the tribes in northern Philippines. In fact, the kamalig is typically raised from the ground and is being protected, it's being protected from rats and pests. In some provinces, especially those in the lowland areas, the bahay kubo or nipahat can be used as a form of kamalig is cemetery or cementerio. It is a place where people bury the dead. So it has other names such as Campo Santo, Pantayon, and Libingan. So a cemetery had a small chapel and vaults or what we call nichos surrounding the chapel. Nowadays, memorial parks which have wide green areas covering the vaults and we, what we call columbariums which are buildings for storing cremated remains are developed. Number five is Simbahan, and a Simbahan is a place of worship for a Christian congregation. However, a church was designed usually depends on the religious domination it belongs. So for example, we have the Roman Catholic churches. So the typical Roman Catholic church built during the Spanish colonial period and has the earthquake Baroque style. So when we say Baroque style, this is a classic design originated in Rome. So this style is characterized by having a separate bell tower from the church facade and stronger walls with buttresses. Next, we have the Aglipayan churches. 
considering that the Iglesia Filipina Independiente or more popularly known as the Aglipayan Church is an offshoot of the Roman Catholic Church. So most of its churches have the same style with Roman Catholic churches. However, there are some Aglipayan churches that have contemporary architectural styles such as the Cathedral of the Holy Child in Manila. Next, we have Protestant churches. So most Protestant churches have the Neo-Gothic architectural style, meaning revolts and pointed arcs can be seen in every structure. In addition to those stained glass windows, were also used to add the colorful effects brought about by the sun's rays. And of course, we have the Iglesia de Cristo or the INC churches. A typical facade of INC has a triangular arc that is lined with tall slender towers. So there are also two additional towers at the rear part of the church. We have movie house or sinihan. So the sinihan is a place where people watch films or motion pictures. This is used to be a separate large building and it is considered as a landmark in the community. There are now movie houses that are part of the structure of shopping malls. These movie houses inside malls are smaller than a separate sinihan. This is not only prevalent in Metro Manila but also in provincial urban centers. Theater or Teatro. The Teatro is a building intended for dance, musical, and theatrical presentations. So this is different form of an auditorium because the Teatro is essentially a separate building compared to the former. Last we have, we have other forms and structure. First is the Fort or Kuta. These are structures that are built to defend a community against enemies. So, these are usually found in areas with natural barriers such as cliffs, hills, narrow passes, mountains, and waters. Second is lighthouse or parola. The lighthouse is a structure built on an island, peninsula, or rock to ensure that ships will be able to pass through a narrow area safely. A good example of this is the, is the Cape Bojador Lighthouse in Ilocos Norte. 